What's up, everybody? Welcome to Philly Insider Podcast. We come at you with a sadder video because I don't think either of us wanted to be doing this this early. I think we were hoping this would have come much later in the year. But we are coming at you with our Sixers overview for the 2021 to 2022 NBA season. And Hunter, you know, we got a lot to touch on. This episode is probably going to be split up into smaller episodes. We got a lot of topics to go through. So for those of you who don't want the whole long haul, you can wait a bit longer. We'll probably have the clips come out piece by piece. Yeah. And But let's start, man. we got to start it with the general overview. General overview of how the season went. Give me the spark notes on how you felt. Give me the journey of the season, man. Well, we went from, you know, a, a solid start. We lost Joel due to COVID early on in the year. Still did really well despite all of that. And look, we were a top, I think we were second or third before we got Harden. So, you know, we had a really good, we had a really good squad going there. But also you have to keep in mind, Boston didn't get, get going yet. You know, Miami, Miami was really good the whole year, but they were still finding their groove. Same with Milwaukee. Like, I feel like, I feel like everyone just kind of hadn't really gotten into the rhythm yet. And then once everyone did, we fell back a little bit in the pack. But I mean, look, I want to, first off, I want to shout out two guys. We won't get to talk about them, but they were on the team to start the year. Seth Curry, who was just really good in his year and a half in Philly. Really appreciate him. And Andre Drummond, who was just way better than I think anyone thought he would be in that backup center spot. Um, I mean, he's kind of thought of as a meme around the league, but he really does do a lot that goes unnoticed. So I want to shout out those two guys. First half of the year, you know, you could just tell we didn't have enough, but you could tell Maxi was really getting on, you know, getting in a rhythm and he was starting to ascend into this rising star. And then we get Harden and expectations shifted. I mean, we went from, okay, this team's a second round exit again to this team should contend for an NBA championship. Now, those expectations kind of shifted, I think, once we actually got into the playoffs. But at the time of the trade, it looked like we were kind of, at least in our eyes, we thought we were the team to beat in the East. And first couple of games of Harden played, it sure looked like that. But just kind of got progressively five worse. Five games were something special, man. Those were they some were. special five They games. were. He was really awesome to start his career in Philly. And he, he usually is after trades from what I'm, you know, what I'm hearing after, well, with the Brooklyn trade, at least just the one time. But, yeah, I, I think, you know, obviously things just kind of didn't ma- continue to not mesh. Not even not mesh. It was just he really started to not play well. We were still winning. We were still winning, right? And even in the Raptors series, like, the first three games went phenomenally. Even game three wasn't the best, but we won that game. And then when we lost at home in game five, I was like, yeah, this team is not fit to go all the way. So that was kind of the moment I knew that things were not going to go the way we wanted because you a, a tough and gritty team does not lose a game five at home with a 3-1 lead. That doesn't happen. I know we came out one game six and – dominant fashion but after that and the Joel injuries and everything you just knew it wasn't really shaping up to be our year so um definitely not as bad there's been there's been some worse heartbreaks but yeah it sucks I mean I think we all thought this team was gonna finally get over the hump this year man you want to talk about I'll start mine from a bit I'll do go mine even a bit faster than you did you gave us a lot of the main points which I wanted to get through but I'll add some of my own points in on those you started knowing we weren't going to get over the hump. You started the roster we started with. Everyone's consensus was this is a second-round exit team. Nobody disagreed. Nobody was like this team we had at the start of the year could get past the second round. I at least didn't hear anybody giving that tick if there were people doing it. But then you move over to the other side, man, and we get on the other side of the James Harden trade after holding our own in the standings throughout the regular season. And you say... And I was one of the guys who came on the live. Me and Rossi did a live. You came on that day, too, for that. In the middle of the day, during we were all in college classes. We all took our time, got on that live immediately. And then the group chat was furiously typing. We had all kinds of messages going. And we were saying, this is it. But that, that was the move. You were like, this is where you get over the hump. This is where you get to the ECF at the least. And finals was the expectation at that point. And then the first five games happen, and we think this is it. It has to be it. We were right. We called it. Shots up. It's time for Embiid to go get his ring. It's time for the city to get its ring. And then you start to see signs of decline. And you're like, okay, you know, maybe that was a bit too hot. Maybe we'll get back to the mean here. But it just kept going and going and going. And this, I'm talking specifically about Harden. 
And then you saw the thing was, though, even throughout this slight decline, you could still see what he was doing for the other guys on this team, like Toby, like Maxi, like Danny, getting them wide open shots, letting them play an excellent free flowing game. And you still made excuses for him. I can say that because I did. I made every single excuse under the sun for James this season. And then you keep seeing the decline and then the playoffs and the decline was steep, steep, man. Outside of the one huge game we had with Moses versus the Heat, I think that was game five. Game, game four. Four, game four. Outside of that, bro, James Harden was pathetic in the playoffs. It just has to be said. He was. There's no two ways about it. He always has been, though. I mean, <laughs> we probably should have seen that coming. We mentioned that last year when we were at the but deadline. Point, but we just thought we just thought that with Joel, it was going to be different. Like, but unfortunately, I think that's just who he is ourselves. in the playoffs. We tried to make those excuses. The proof was all there. Everybody told us this before. We wanted to believe something different. We bought in, and sure enough, second round exit again. And just heart, in heartbreaking fashion, because the thing is, it also had to be to Jimmy's heat. Is that that was just that was another slap? That was admittedly that was another slap in the face for the Sixers fans because you saw everything he was doing for the Heat, and you were like, you just couldn't. I know, I understand. Really, I do. There's no point to looking back that far now. Yeah, but that but, doesn't make it hurt any less. Thank you. I think you just that. just to cut you off too, Sanjay. I mean, look. It, we wouldn't be thinking about that if it wasn't for the fact that Jimmy literally had his post game interview and literally said he wishes he was still teammates with Joel. Like you can tell, he wanted he wanted to stay here. Like that's not really that's not really an unknown. Like he wanted to stay in Philadelphia and play with Joel. I'm sure if Joel ever requests a trade, I'm sure he'll ask to go play with Jimmy. Like it's it just sucks, you know, because we really could have had something special. Imagine if we just had Jimmy Butler, we drafted Jason Tatum, we had Joel Embiid. Oh, and we kept Michael Bridges. What a lineup that would have been. I mean, what a lineup that would have been. So sorry to cut you off, but it just I think the post game interview oh, brought that. I mean, I don't because I don't like to look back at the Jimmy thing either. But I mean, because I, I was my my perspective was always look, I wanted Jimmy back. We all did, but it's like you got to move on and try to win with the new team and like try to see what else we can do. And when we got Harden, I was like, finally, we can move past that. Didn't happen. But when he brought, I think, you know, you're justified, man. When he brought it up in post-game interview and then he said, Tobias Harris over me, which that wasn't the one I was upset about. I was more upset we paid Al Horford that offseason. And I was upset when we paid Al Horford. But anyway, I just wanted to say, you know, it, it's hard to it's hard to not go back to the past when Jimmy literally wants to be here. So. No, it very much is. So then that was like the final slap in the face on our way into the offseason. James will obviously pick up his player option. That's another thing that will go understated is between his contract, Danny Green is still under contract, even though he will most probably not play much, if any, of next year. And then you look at other guys we have, Toby. I want to say. Toby's the big one. Toby is the big one. We just have so many big guys under contract who aren't going to be able to significantly, significantly contribute at that level for next year. So to me, next year has become just almost forfeit, almost to the point of complete retool. You like retool. I prefer the term rebuild because I think this is going to have to go at least two or three years. But we'll get into that at the end. We're not going to talk about the future now. The spoilers, there will be a future segment to this.